want more cleaning accounts if you're a commercial cleaning com company? Well, you got a couple of different options. Well, first you can join a networking group in your area and uh, you know go ahead and get involved with that networking group. Uh, just do a search. There's plenty in your area. And uh, the whole thing is that we want to build relationships. And uh, when you're building the relationships, try to learn more about what that other person does and how you can help them. Uh, with you helping them, uh, then they'll reciprocate uh, that by helping you and giving you referrals. But anyway, the bottom line is when you join a networking group is to get involved with it. Just don't join and then not go to any meetings and, and, and meet any people. Um, I hear that quite often. Well, it didn't work for me, but yet they didn't get involved uh, uh, with, uh, with the group. <coughs> um, one thing that I've always done is I've always joined the, the local chamber of commerce. Now, the local chamber of commerce has uh, what they call a group of uh, the ambassadors. Now, all cities may not have that, that group, but what that group does is that they're kind of like a welcome committee for uh, new members and, and renewing members. Now, that's a great way to get in front of decision makers because you're going to be meeting with, you know, presidents of companies, owners of companies, CEOs, and or managers. So, you know, those are the decision makers. And... Uh, now, I guarantee you that they will know who handles the cleaning contract. So that's why I've always done that. Uh, great strategy, worked fantastic for me. Uh, I was able to grow my business 100% uh, uh, for about five years there uh, for my second company. So great strategy. Like I say, you got to get, get involved if you join a net networking group. The other thing you can do is that you can actually create a list of prospects. So, first of all, you want to think about the segments that you're going to go after. Which ones do you serve? Which ones are you best at? Uh, do you clean professional office buildings? Uh, do you clean medical facilities? Are you in educational or industrial? Uh, do, are you cleaning retail? You know, which one do you have the most experience in and, and uh, is known as an expert in that field? If you're not known as an expert, well, then start writing articles, uh, do some um, uh, workshops and things like that to educate people on you know various reasons why they should be cleaning and the health uh, benefits and so on and so forth but once you decide on what sector you're going to go after just do a google search you can do a, uh, do a search for uh, professional office buildings in your area and uh, you'll have a, you can create a list that way uh, put this list on a spreadsheet or a CRM something like that because you got to be able to track the information that you're going to gather and that's there that's really the key there once you get your list do some research. So once you have the name of the company, get the, their website, their, uh, their uh, uh, telephone number, uh, go to their website, take a look at it, find out exactly what it is that they do, learn more about them. You know, in some of these, about the About You page will tell you who's the president or CEO or manager or, or you know, the, one of the decision makers. Um, and, you know, they all have a Contact Us page, so you'll be able to get a phone number, an address, uh, and be able to contact them. Because that's what we're doing is with our con with our uh, prospect list, we're going to gather information and then we're going to start making phone calls. Um, and with our phone calls, we're going to have probably a, a pre-written script that we're going to use uh, so we can try to contact the, uh, or get the name of the decision maker of who handles the cleaning contract. So once we're able to do that and we get that person on the phone, uh, then it's all about you know, just finding out more about their needs and wants. You know, don't be selling them on, on, on yourself and, and your company, which many people do. You know, they'll just instantly go into sell, sell mode and just start telling them about all the features of the business. Well, we, we're bonded, we're insured, we're, we're this, we're that, we do this. And, you know, they don't, they don't really care. They know, uh, they probably know for sure that uh, what they want in a cleaning company, and one of those things is that you should be bonded and insured. Um, Otherwise, they're more than likely not going to hire you. Um, but <clears throat> talk, tell them about you know how you saved your your uh, last three clients you know uh, money on uh, the services that you provided. You know tell them how you were able to save them cost on energy. Uh, those are the things they want to hear about. You know how can you save them time and or money? That's what's important to them. So don't don't uh, go and uh, go and try to sell yourself and just talk all about your features. Talk about the benefits of how you help others. So once you have that meeting like that, uh, the face-to-face -face meeting is really the key because you want to be able to ask a lot of good questions and be able to, uh, to do a walkthrough. So in the walkthrough, you're going to walk walk the facility or or the office. 
you know, and you're going to just let them lead and uh, uh, listen to what they're saying. Uh, don't badmouth the, the current cleaning company. Uh, you know, they already know they got an issue, otherwise you wouldn't be talking to them. So you don't need to remind them of that. But uh, ask a lot of good questions, and uh, uh, all of us should have a, a, a list of uh, questions that we will ask, you know, as such as information gathering questions and, and uh, things like that there. So, and uh, that's really the key. You've got to ask some good questions. You've got to get them to talk. You've got to uncover if it's price-driven uh, and what are some of their pain points. Uh, what are some of the things that they, if they could, they could change about their current company. Um, you know, just, just ask really good questions. That's really going to make the difference. What I like to do is I like to get to where the prospect tells me, well, nobody's ever asked me that before. Uh, once I, once they have a response uh, to me like that, then I know, okay, I'm, I'm doing my job. But anyway, that's the key is we got to gather information. And when we're doing the walkthrough, we have to know the cleanable square footage. We need the frequency of uh, service and we need the, the scope of work. Those are the first three things we need to know in order to arrive at a price point for a proposal. Without those, we're, we're lost. You know, uh, Many times people will say, well, I'll send you, I'll send you a blueprint. Uh, that's generally our members uh, or somebody that I, that I see on Facebook. They'll say, well, I'll send you a blueprint. Well, they, they're not sending me a blueprint. They're just sending me a photo of a blueprint, which does me no good whatsoever. Uh, there's no way you can do a takeoff off of a photo of a blueprint. In order to do a takeoff, you have to you have to have actual blueprints. So keep that in mind, so you don't waste your time uh, on you know just because a prospect has sent you sent you a photo of a blueprint. Um, but anyway, it's in, it's really important that we have the cleanable square footage. We have to know the the square footage of the areas that we're cleaning, uh, the frequency of cleaning. Are we cleaning it one day per week, five days per week, seven days per week? You know, how often are we cleaning it? And the scope of work, very, very important. We have to know what they want. You know, what are their expectations? And, you know, once we know that and from walking the building, uh, the building or the office, we have a pretty good idea where we're probably going to be on our pricing. Hopefully. But the key there then is once we've gathered all their information, we'll, uh, before we leave that meeting, we're going to go ahead and set up another appointment with them to come back and present our proposal. Uh, so that's what you want to do. So you'll thank them for the time, set, set your next appointment, and then you're going to go back to your office and you're going to generate a proposal. So once you generate that proposal, uh, it's all going to be based on the information that you gathered. And um, once you do that, uh, the, the information that you gather uh, will really help you determine on what production rate you would use uh, for that cleaning of that space, or if you have a current, uh, current uh, account that is similar to that, you can actually use that production rate uh, and some of the numbers that you have for that. That's where, where it really makes it easy to, to price accounts. Um, by knowing your production rate, your production rate is your how many square feet you can clean in one hour. So uh, for example for a five day per week service you may be cleaning uh, 3,500 to 4,500 square feet per hour. Now it all depends on the, the type of cleaning system that you're using. Are you using zone cleaning? Are you using team cleaning? Collaborative cleaning? You know, what, what type of system are you using? Because it really makes a difference. You know, in using a team cleaning uh, uh, system, you can actually get up to 55, 6,500 square feet per hour. So those are all things that we got to keep in mind um, to uh, put a proposal together for a prospect. But uh, there you do have another option uh, in order to get accounts, and you can always subcontract. But now when you're subcontracting, um, you know, make sure you know who you're doing business with. There's a, lar a lot of large national companies out there that will subcontract work to small local companies. And if they, do, if they tell you that we're going to pay X amount of dollars uh, per month for the service, run your numbers and see if you can actually do that service for that price. Some of these uh, companies are, are just low ballers and they come in really low. Uh, there's no way that you're going to make money on, on, uh, on the project. Uh, that's really the key is when you're subcontracting it has to be a win-win for everybody not just for the the large company that's subcontracting the workout so generally what we do uh, and we don't we uh, never uh, uh, did a lot of uh, subcontracting uh, we did it once and uh, that's the only time I did it otherwise we always had our all of our own employees we're all in-house uh, but our subcontractor we paid 80 20 so they got 80% of the con of the uh, of the contract. I got 
and it worked out fantastic. They were able to make some good money on it, uh, you know, and I made 20% for managing the account. Uh, that's a fair split. You're going to see splits uh, from 50-50, 60-40, 70-30, 80-20, 90-10, uh, you know, all over the board. But the, the bottom line is to make sure that it's a fair win-win deal for everybody. And don't accept it if you can't make money. And again, um, if they come back with a low ball offer, uh, run your numbers and then go and negotiate. Let them know that, well, you know, I can't do it for that price, but I can do it for this price. And see if they, see if they put a deal together. Now the other problem is too is that you be careful when you sign uh, sign these contracts with these companies. Uh, some of them are uh, pretty extensive contracts. They tie you up uh, to where you can't do anything uh, for a, a quite a long period of time in some areas. So if the contract or the agreement's not favorable or win-win for for each each party, don't sign it. Just uh, there's plenty of work out there. There's no need for you to to get into a situation to where it's not a win-win for you. So those are uh, a few ways that you can go out and uh, get some uh, cleaning accounts if you're a commercial cleaning company. Um, also the, uh, the one thing that you can do is if you're having trouble with uh, calculating your production rates or price points uh, you can always uh, visit the janitorialstore.com and we have uh, 11 different calculators there uh, that will help you uh, calculate if you're going to make a profit on the job. Uh, we have a post-construction cle uh, cleaning calculator and then we got other uh, janitorial bidding calculators. Uh, we have a consumables calculator so if you're if the, the uh, prospect wants you to supply consumables such as toilet paper and hand towels well how are you, you going to calculate that? Well you know that's where our calculator comes in handy uh, you'll do a number. You'll enter in a couple of numbers, and it will uh, tell you what your estimated uh, volume of use is going to be and the cost. So, but uh, hopefully, I, you find this helpful. And if you have any other questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, be more, more than willing to, to share my uh, my experience with you. Thanks.